and in this video I will describe how to automatically generate unique identification numbers in Google Spreadsheets. These unique identification numbers you can use for example to generate unique identification numbers for students, employees, assets and equipment. The problem is that Google Spreadsheets has no unique number generator such as for example MS Access that generates unique numbers in the forms of product key. Use Google's functions such as random, random between, the now function or even a function where you have the cell, the previous cell, plus one is problematic because all these functions are unstable meaning as soon as perhaps a function is performed on the spreadsheet these numbers change you can't have a student number that constantly change you can't have an asset number that constantly change these numbers need to be stable and specific and constant throughout the process of course you can manually generate these numbers and then fill it in afterwards. But the focus of this video is how to save time and to automatically generate these unique identification numbers when the forms are submitted. We propose two solutions. One is to create a unique ID from inputs such as texts that the person uses, maybe an ID number, his name and his surname. The second is based on the timestamps that Google Spreadsheets automatically generates if and when someone submits a form. I will discuss and develop each solution so that you have a better idea of it and better understand it so that you will be able to adapt it according to your own unique situation. At the end of the discussion there will be the formula. These formulas in order to use the formulas you can simply pause the screen or you can use a screen grabber and then print out the formulas. The solution I will discuss now is how to create unique IDs from inputs. use three sets of data the last name the first name and the South African ID number that is mandatory and that someone must input in the form simply joining them by having the formula A2 join it ambassade with the first name the two join it ambassade with C2 and then drag it. And then you have your formula and the cells data. However, we want uh, the array formula because data must be input automatically when the form is submitted. And then we simply put these things in the array formula namely get the contents of the cell A, the last name and then for the whole column since it's a array, array formula join it with the contents of cell B, the first name join it with this African ID which is in cell C as an array formula and then you get your end result but this data may be a little bit too messy and more difficult to read. You want to make it more cleaner and more easy to read. For that then can you insert separators and then we simply have the formula to join it first last name with the comma and then also first name then with a hyphen and the RSA ID. 
that is the formula that you then simply drag down to have what you want however we want this as an array formula and then we put it in an array format where you have the content of cell A, the last name go for the um, replicators in terms of the whole column A add the separator, comma, space that is between the quotes and join it then with the first name and join that with a separator that is between the quotes, quotes namely comma, hyphen, space and then with subject and ID this number may be a little bit better to read but it may be too big and long for your purposes therefore you can just look at all the surnames maybe you want to reduce the size of the surnames make it consistent maybe you want just the first three letters of the surname I like to work from inside out and then you some, I simply some copy a formula put it in there and then you put the left uh, letters of the starting from the left of the surname and just use the first three the first three letters and then join that with the separator that is a comma space join that with the first name separator join that with the separator hyphen and then the subject ID However, this may still be a little bit too long for you and you may just want the f first letter of the person's name, the initial. All you then do is like to add and simply add and build from inside out. You change the middle uh, formula so that it is starting from the left. You want the first letter of the name. I don't want to let you want the first letter and there you have your end product which is quite easier much more easier to read but you may also want to continue and then shorten the ID number and may just have the first eight digits and numbers of the ID number and you subsequently change the formula but this may be a little bit uh, still for you, a little bit though easier to read, you want it more concise, compressed, and remove the separators. And it all depends on you, whatever you want to do, how many separators you want to have, how many numbers you want to have. But this is the way I prefer it, and then it is very concise, for me more concise and more easy to use for the learners here then follows the formulas that you can then and make a screenshot of the next solution we discuss is to create a unique ID from timestamps which are automatically generated if and when some submits a form in Google Spreadsheets. Here are the timestamps consisting of the date, month, day, and the year, as well as the time, the hour, the minutes, and the seconds. In this column, you have the mandatory input, which in this case consists of an asset and the description of the asset. To extract the date to show as a number, you put in the formula, the array formula, um, get a 2 for the whole column since it's an array formula. If it is empty, the true value, then the return value, return an empty cell. But if it is not empty, the un the false value then return the date value and this is in the number that you get to extract the date 
as a, in a date format, all you do is you take it in this number format and you format it. Number as a number, format number as a date. There you have it. You can associate and join the number with the asset description. And for doing this, you have then the formula, array formula, where you replicate the content of cell B2 and do this for the whole column. Join it then with a separator, whatever separator you want. In this case, the separator is space, hyphen space. And join it then with an array formula, using an array formula internally. Namely, using the if form formula, if the contents of A2, the timestamp is empty, then the true value returns empty. The false value, comma, if it is false, return the date value. And there you have your asset, your ID, consisting of an asset plus a text. You may feel, but this system does not work for me. Because, suppose I have 10 chairs and the person in charge input it on the same date, then there is no difference between the chairs or the office desks or whatever asset you have. Maybe it will work for me better if you have a differentiation also in time because the person cannot put it in at the same second and minute. Then, in order to extract the time and show it as a number from the timestamp, you put in the following array formula, which is, which is an if formula if the true value, this value in cell A2 and for the whole column is empty, the true value that we turn is an empty cell. If, however, it is false, then the value return is a time value. And there's a time value as a money. You can also change the time value to extract and to show the definite time. And for that, you do the number, format number, and there you format the number as a time. And there you have your time. What you then can do is you can join the asset with the time and in this case we join the asset with the time with the following formula and uh, also having a separator in between this is a potential uh, id which is easier to read maybe than a long number however you feel a little bit comfortable with this number where the time is more explicit and you want a real number then you join it the asset with a number and the separator are using the formula as is shown here and is shown later what that will be shown later namely which consists of take the contents of cell b which is the asset join it with a separator in the quotes space hyphen space and then join it with the time value that you extract from the time stamp. But you will see that the time value it becomes a little bit too long and maybe a little bit uncomfortable and difficult to work with. Therefore, you can reduce the time number by using the following formula. Maybe you just want the first five or six values of the time number with a MIT formula, with a MIT function. You use a MIT function on the time value. Give me the time value, but if you give me the time value, please, please give me the middle numbers there. Starting with the third number, is the third number. You can take the fourth number or any other number. I use the third number, the third number. That one is then number two, because this first two characters are already counted. Start with character two, 
and then the six characters there after and including the third character which you use us. And this number may be more palatable and more easy on the eye as well as to use. Creating a unique number from a timestamp is very suitable for incidents that you only want to enter once, such as an asset that you only enter once into an asset register, or a correspondence received, or sent out, or something that you got from the couriers, or sent via couriers. These elements are only referred to once. But what now about an event to which you want to refer more than once, such as an appeals process that have various levels of appeals, or a marketing event which you want to access more than once? In these cases, you use the first method, namely to construct an ID from elements that do not change such as the name and the surname. Thank you very much for watching this video. We love constructive comments. Please like this video.